I am a developer and designer here in Australia. And you might have seen maybe a couple of my videos on ChatGPT. And in this part of the video, I actually wanted to cover a bit about that, um, which is actually, uh, I suppose, the AI aspects of it and AI in general today, as well as the technical aspects of building out a chatbot, why you would want to do that and why it would be important. Um, so we'll jump into that in just a bit. I'm just double checking that uh, Carl doesn't want to come on. Uh, he'll be on probably shortly, but I'll just jump straight into it. So uh, if we head over here, um, now these are the two parts we'll be looking at today. The first part is obviously AI and chatbots in general. And the second part will be the more technical aspect where I'll show you what that looks like in terms of building uh, a chat application. And what's really interesting here is that it doesn't actually take that very long to build a chat application. And I think you'll find that into the future, this is going to be something that's quite important to organizations, but I'll get into that shortly. So what I wanted to talk about to start off with is a little bit of a, the history in terms of AI, in terms of chatbots, and in terms of ChatGPT. Especially from my point of view, I was always quite interested in all types of AI-related topics. So I've always been following this scene quite uh, closely. And from that, in the past, there really wasn't that much around machine learning and chatbots in the past. Um, a lot of the older chatbots, they didn't really come with that many smarts like you might be seeing right now. There were a lot of if else scripts, which means that if the person says, hello, come back with message saying, oh, hi, how are you? How can I help? If they say, oh, I'm looking for A, B or C, then you pick A, B and C and then go down that narrative path. You have to be very manual about the chatbots in the past. And because of that, you probably didn't see them much around simply because they were very difficult to build. It wasn't something that any organization could really put together because you would have to almost have like a team considering all the types of questions a person might put in. And most of the times people didn't really get the answer they wanted from the chatbot. So the end result was always them just contacting an actual person. So it wasn't as useful either. And it also ended up having a lot of errors because of that. So in a general sense, just you didn't see many chatbots in the past. But there is something that's changed during the last year or two. And this is where in the last year, I got to know about things like what OpenAI were doing before ChatGPT came along, as well as obviously the uh, ChatGPT infrastructure coming along to the general public. So they're more aware of what's available. And it will be also interesting to see what happens into the future, like one or two years down the track. And I think this is where we can actually start having a look at the current state of chat bots, I suppose, and what's changed and why you might want to actually even start using them. And about a year ago, this is where I came across OpenAI. They were actually still a very small company, but they already had created some text-based models that had these things called, well, predictive text or language models. And this was just a small part of what they were doing. They were also doing image models and voice models. But it was the actual text models that had me interested because I could already see the potential of how they could be used to do things like chatbots, to do things like, for example, writing a code and much more. And I thought that this was something that I definitely had to look into and start playing around with. And I was lucky enough to learn a lot of this in the early days. And I could see that AI was going to be a big thing moving into the future, something that probably a lot of organizations would start using. So this is where a lot of people still didn't know about ChatGPT, but OpenAI actually released it to the wild at their own cost. And it did a number of things. First of all, it was the first chatbot that was more or less what you call almost intelligent. It did this because it was a large language model. In the past, a lot of these chatbots we probably saw online were small models of, you know, maybe a small subset of training. 
and you could always trick them or they didn't always produce very accurate results, maybe like 5%, 10% accuracy. It was really varied. No one really trusted them to actually use within a business. And I think that's the biggest change. What OpenAI did and what ChatGPT did was they actually trained a huge 175 gigabyte set of data, of text all over the web as well as books and much more. And they created the first system that had a high percentage of accuracy with actual smarts behind it, where it could do predictive text with lots of features where you could give it a small sentence and it could quite accurately predict what you wanted as a result of that. And this is where some of the features started coming along with actual chatbots that could never have been done easily in the past. Now OpenAI gave you the ability to do this quite easily. Things like content writing, which means that, for example, you could ask ChatGPT to simply write you out a blog or a piece of content or even a resume, and it would actually fill out all the content based on what you ask it to do. And for a chatbot to do this in the past was unheard of. It could also do summarization. So where in the past people built entire models around summarizing maybe a news article, ChatGPT could just do this on the fly with no additional parameters. You could just plug in an article, ask it to summarize it, ask it to summarize it even in different language, and it could do that. It could do language conversions. It could even give you insights into the article and much, much more. And then after that, as a chatbot, it could then talk to you in a conversation-like manner to talk about the article in general. And this is something that I think a lot of people's minds were blown at, that you could do something like this, where in the past you just wouldn't. And then it started doing even more. This is where OpenAI started to train it on even larger sets of data, things like programming and solving problems and providing suggestions and explanations. And people started to take notice of this. Microsoft themselves took notice of this. And they themselves purchased shares in OpenAI and started implementing it into their own software, like VS Code, which is where we get GitHub Copilot and other pieces of software now. And what it would do is it would, in a chat manner, be able to have a look at a piece of code and line by line describe it even fix mistakes that were in there and you could talk with it even updating that piece of code and this is what i think again blew a lot of people's minds that you could do this and you could do this extremely easily so this is where i think it's time to have a look at the actual chatbot um, implementation of this in day-to-day -day business because what open ai have now done is provided an api layer for anyone to not only use ChatGPT, but to use any of their models to create and implement into their own business. And the thing that they've done is that they've made this extremely easy. So now, whether you're doing things like problem solving, suggestions, or even creating chat with simple trained models that you want to provide assistance to customers, this is something that's now extremely easy to do, which is one thing that you couldn't do in the past. It's also quite cheap. And in just 10 to 15 minutes, you can actually get your own chatbot up and running, which can work quite well, which is what I sort of want to show later on in the demo. And this is some code that I'll also be able to share with you guys if you want to download that. But let's have a look at how it's actually changed the Mang setup. And if you guys don't know what Mang is, it's the big companies, things like Meta, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google who now all are pivoting to implement not just chatbots, but AI in general into all sectors of their business. And if the largest organizations are doing it, then all the smallest organizations will be coming to do this soon as well. In the past, you probably saw things like, for example, VS Code, um, sorry, VS Code implementing GitHub Copilot into it. We've got Microsoft implementing AI into Bing Chat. And we also have image services like DALI and Midjourney creating art as well using AI. And these are the top level. Now, this is very similar to what I saw in the web a few years ago. And in the web a few years ago, only the largest companies had websites. But slowly, as the web became more democratized, I suppose everyone's starting to have websites. This is happening now with AI. 
AI is made much easier now. And in the future, I can actually see all companies across all sectors implementing some sort of AI into their infrastructure, which is why it's so important to be across the board of how it works now, implemented early to be essentially ahead of the wave. And even if you're not, even if you just want to get a better understanding of it, you'll see why it's going to play such a vital or important role in the future. So, I want to have a look at some of the examples already out in the ecosystem. And one is GitHub Copilot. While it's not exactly a chat bot, it basically works in the exact same manner. It's essentially the code editor that you have for programmers. And here you can almost talk to the code editor. In this case, people just can add in comments, like determine whether this text is positive or negative using a web service. And basically OpenAI responds with the piece of code that you can do to do this. Another example obviously is in AI art, where you can explain exactly what kind of web, uh, website design you might want, what kind of artwork you want. In this case, I obviously wrote a lot of artwork for shoe designs in web design, and I got a lot of really cool creative AI artwork for shoes, which looks quite interesting. But it's just another facet of how AI is going to be implemented across the board in different sectors. There's other parts of this being already implemented, and Filestack have their own version of that too. Uh, things like machine learning or AI to do image detection or object recognition, and even just converting text for example, that you see in when you scan a piece of a document and converting that to real text, that's again, just all AI. And I think in the future, we'll probably see a lot of copyright detection using AI too. And I think this is where it's important to understand how each one of these aspects of AI can be implemented in different types of businesses and how it can actually help, whether it's between the business and the customer or the business and some automation or much, much more. So, since we're looking at chatbots today, I want to actually have a look at what does a chatbot looks like. Uh, look like. What does it look like currently? What will it look like tomorrow? And what will it look down like in a year or even in three years in terms of business? And even whether it's worthwhile implementing a chatbot, because while in the past you might have seen those little pop-ups you see on the bottom right of a screen and sometimes people use them sometimes they don't you never know how long you have to wait for a real person to talk to it's almost it would be easier a lot of the times to just call someone um, the chatbot system is something that i've actually kind of gotten used to especially with large organizations like amazon or just general organizations implementing chat into their day-to-day -day as part of their support network it's something that we've slowly gotten used to but one of the things that people still don't like is obviously waiting for a response and even sometimes when you're waiting for that response, a user or a person might just be asking for something really simple. And instead of having a actual person spend time and money to be able to solve that problem, this is where AI can start now being part of that automatic solution. And this can do a number of things. It can obviously add these interactions where you can solve problems for customers, can engage with customers before, for example, they might have questions to ask, you can engage with them immediately. And I think one of the other things is that if you start implementing this already in your software, you'll be ahead of all the competition and other organizations, which will probably only start adopting this in maybe two or three years. But I'm pretty sure that this will become the new norm of the web, that every website will have some sort of AI or chatbot implemented into the future. So here are some examples of how a chatbot can be used. The first, obviously, is to avoid users from bouncing. I think this is something that a lot of organizations struggle with. I've noticed that when I do development for uh, different businesses, one of the things that they always ask is how to reduce their bounce rate. And that's when someone arrives at a website and then they simply leave. And they leave normally because either the website isn't designed very well or they leave because they didn't get the answer they were looking for immediately. Sometimes an answer can be hidden further down in a website or on a different page. And if a user can't find that, they'll just simply leave. And this is where I think the chatbot can play a significant difference and a difference in how that interaction works. Because for example, if a user is landing on a page and they can't find what they're looking for, a chatbot can sit in that page or even all the pages 
and it can pop up if, for example, it looks like the user doesn't know what they're looking for. And if a user sets up a conversation with the chatbot saying, oh, I'm looking for this bit of information, the chatbot can be actually created in such a way that it directs them straight to the correct page. And this can be done very easily, which is what I want to show. And what is required to do this, I suppose? Uh, this is where I'll slowly get into the development side of things. But realistically, you need to understand OpenAI and have an account on there. You'll need a little bit of knowledge for front-end and a little bit of knowledge for back-end. But really, this can actually be built more or less in a single day. And I'm going to do this in just about 15 minutes. So OpenAI. If you haven't heard of it, it is the company that created the AI and they have an API layer on their website that allows you to interact with their AI systems. It means you don't have to build up any of the chatbot systems yourself. It's already ready to go and all you have to do is sort of set it to work the way you want. Now, the way you do this to start off with is quite easy. You actually just log into OpenAI and its systems and then after that, you can go to a page called the Playground, which I'll show shortly, where you can test whether your chatbot interactions will actually work, and then you can customize them to work however you want. You don't need any technical knowledge to do this. Any business owner can do this right now. And this environment is very similar to how the chat GPT works already, but it provides a little bit more freedom so that you can set this up the way you want and then hand it off to a developer to then build. And this is what we'll be doing. Then after that, when a developer comes along, they can create a front end integration for this. And what's really great is that you don't need much to do this, maybe just some HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You can, of course, use frameworks like React or Svelte or many others, but really any framework will work and we'll be just doing the most basic type. The others is the backend integration. And the backend integration can run on any web server and all it really needs to do is pass information off from the client to the server and communicate to OpenAI, which is what we'll be doing. So uh, let's actually look at building this demo. And for this demo, I'm gonna be jumping into VS Code and I'm gonna go a little bit technical, but before I do, I just want to show the playground system We'll show how a AI chatbot can be created, and then we'll code one out. So let's do that now. So this is the open AI website. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing it, all you have to do is select the API button here. And it'll ask you to log in. And after you log in, you'll be taken to this page. Just let me just select it once more, uh, log in. So I'll be logging in here. I think I'm already logged in. I'm not, so I'll just do that now. Uh, with Google, you can log in straight away and you'll get $15 of free credit. So most of the AI doesn't actually use much credit, but you'll be on this landing page. There's this button here called Playground, which I'll select and it comes quite empty, but it has everything you need to test whether a chatbot works. Now to do this, you need a small bit of a prompt here. I've written chat uh, file stack, and I'll actually do file stack chat bot, and here I have human. So this is sort of how the interaction works at the basic level, and we need a bit of a prompt here. So for the prompt, you can write something like, I am a file stack chat bot. I am friendly and helpful, and provide advice about file stack. So here we have the initialization of what we wanted to do. And this is all that you actually need. Now you initialize it, how can I help? And from a human point of view, you can write something like, what is file stack? Simple as that. You just click submit, and here you'll get the response back from OpenAI. Uh, it'll do a little bit of thinking, and it comes back with a response. So this response basically has that same sort of a framework. It says FileStack is a cloud-based file management system and a delivery platform, et cetera. Then you could ask another question, how can I use it? And this is what a general conversation would look like between a user and the chatbot. But what's happening here is that once you develop this into your own website, you would actually hide 
this little prompt here, which is the prompt of how you want it to work. And you hide this section here where it says human or chatbot. So what the user ends up seeing are just the questions and the responses from the chatbot. And that's it, it's ready to go. And this is what's so interesting about the models themselves, just how easy it is to have a look at how they work and how you can customize them. So let me show what I mean by how you can customize them. We have this same conversation here, but previously if we saw, it just gives us an example of what file stack is. This time I'm going to customize this prompt over here. And uh, I think my camera has disappeared. So let me just make sure that hasn't completely gone. Uh, no, my camera is kind of back, great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this conversation and it says now I'm file stack chatbot, I'm a friendly helpful, but I'll also add in at the end of each conversation, I'll link a URL to the correct answer. It seems pretty logical. So now we'll do the same prompt. It'll explain to us what file stack is, but this time it'll actually link us to the website at the very end. Now, if a person, for example, might have a slightly different question, or if there's something different you want the chatbot to do, you simply ask it to do that in plain language, and it's able to start doing that quite accurately. And this is a strength where you can almost use the chatbot as a call to action. This is something you couldn't do in the past, or if you did, it would be quite difficult. So now this is where we could take what we've created here and start building a system around it. And this is the coding aspect that I want to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a VS Code just over here. And I'm also going to have a drink of water because I'm a bit thirsty. Okay. So what I want to do here is build the file stack chatbot based on the parameters we've already provided here in the playground and turn this into an interface that we can start using. So I'm gonna start building out the backend first. The first thing I wanna do for the backend is import OpenAI. OpenAI have their own module for this that you can start interacting with. So you don't have to build out anything extra. You just interact with the playground or their API models. I'm also going to create a small web server using JavaScript and Express. So this is where I'm going to import Express, as well as a couple of things like body parser and cross-site um, script. Uh, what I believe it is, I can't remember what this one is called, but it allows you to pull and send requests to the server. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize OpenAI and its configuration. So this is something that you'd probably want to do as a environmental key. For this demo, I'm just going to show you my private key and later I'll delete that. And uh, on top of that, I'll probably need to do a few other things, which is then initialize that conversation. Now my camera seems to have gone off once more, so let me just turn that back on. Next, I'm going to import the app here with Express and I'm going to set the port to 3080. I want to import the body parser into the application and as well cores as well. Finally, I love to do a bit of logging so that if I, for example, start the terminal, it tells me when requests come in and come out and that's where I use Morgan. Now it's time for some routing. So I'm going to do a post request and this is a user's post request. When they create a post request to the URL forward slash API, I want them to send a message and I'm going to send that as a post request and it'll be called message. I'm going to console log out this message so we can see exactly what it is. And then I'm going to do a request to OpenAI. And this request over here, it's going to be to do a code completion or, or a text completion. <clears throat> As part of this completion, I'm using the text model DaVinci-003, which is the latest model from OpenAI. And it's also the smartest model. There are other models there that allows you to do summarization like ADA or cheaper models like Curie, but I prefer DaVinci simply because it's the smartest model. We're gonna pass in the message in the prompt 
and we're going to pass in a max token of 100. Now, max tokens is more or less how many characters it responds back with. And one character uh, is, well, four characters is one token, but there's a little bit more behind this. And there's also a temperature, and the temperature is also how random the AI is. I always like to do 0 0.5, which is 50% where it's a little bit creative, but not too creative. Because if you do a full temperature of one, then it might just come out with some nonsense, where if it's a zero, you might have a AI that basically comes out with a repeating sentence of the same thing. We'll log out what OpenAI's response is, and then after that, I want to send it back to the client. And it's going to be the response with choice one dot text, which is just how OpenAI formulates the response. Finally, I will want to showcase any of my files in the public folder because I've built out a little bit of a front end on the front end folder public. And I'm going to listen to this app on port 3080. So that's it. That's the entire backend to interact with the chatbot. There's other things you could build here if you want, but this is the basics and we're ready to go. Let's have a look at the front end now. Now I've only got a plain HTML file here with a little bit of styling, no code yet. What I want to do here is I want to add a chatbot header, which says, welcome to file stack. I want to add a body, and this is the body of the chat message itself. It's a little pop-up that you see at the bottom. And I also want to add in a text input where users can type a message. So that's pretty much all you need for the UI of a chatbot. Of course, you need some scripts as well to interact with that UI. So first, I'm going to create a variable here called the chat log. And this is going to have two parts. The first part will be user messages, and the second part will be the messages coming back from the chatbot or chat GPT. We're going to then listen for the user whenever they go to the input and select enter. And that is key code 13 when you're running it out on JavaScript. So I've got a little bit of a query selector here. It's adding an event listener when the user selects a key or a key up, and that key is the enter button. It runs the next function called request chatbot. So let's create that function. So that function over here will grab the input and it'll grab it from the query selector input. And it's then going to create a new variable here. It's going to combine all the arrays and its items that we have here in the chat log. And we're going to add one more to it, which is from the user. And that one will have a message, which is the input.value. Of course, after that, we need to clear the input.value. So when a user hits enter, that gets saved to the new chat log and then gets cleared. We're then going to select all the messages we have. This is almost like chat history. And since we have an array called the chat log, all we're doing here is we're mapping that out and then we're joining it all together with a join statement. I'm going to then send this to a set chat log function, which we'll create a later on. And I'm also going to add in a small timeout here, which adds a new message called typing dot, dot, dot. And this is to showcase that the API has actually gone ahead and started making the request and it is waiting for the response back for that request. Then I want to console log this out in case there are any errors, but usually there aren't. And we're going to do our fetch request to our local host server. Now this fetch request will be that post that we created earlier in Express. And we're going to stringify this and send the messages as a message to it. We're then going to wait for the response, which is that JSON object we had earlier here, which is the response from OpenAI. And we're going to console log that out. But we're also going to send this to the function called setChatLog with the new object here from ChatGPT with the message called a data.message, which is the one that we're sending over here when we send the response. Finally, let's create that set chat log function. So we're going to get the chat log here as an array, and we're going to set that to chat log. We're also going to get the message select. Well, we'll do query select, and we'll select the chatbot message. We'll clear that out from all of the content it had previously, and we'll create some new divs for that. 
And to do that, we'll all loop through our chat log and we'll create divs with the same sort of structure where, for example, each time there's a message, it creates a div with the chatbot message text. It checks whether that message is from GPT or whether it's from me, and then it fills out the message. And finally, we'll uh, hand that to that ID, the chatbot body message. So that's all of it. And at the end, I think it's only about 150 lines for the front end code and about 50 lines for the back end code. So I should be able to just run this up now. So I did test it out earlier. Let's do npm start. Here it says that the app is listening on port 3080. And here it is, that's everything we built up. So here you can say, it says, hi, I'm Filestack. I'm the Filestack chatbot. How can I help you today? And here I can do a message. And before I do that, I'm also going to open up the debugger tools just so that you guys can see all the console logs that are happening as it interacts. And here I'm gonna type in, what is Filestack? Just like we did earlier in the playground. This is sent to the backend server, as you can see over here, and it's come back with that message. So you can see that message over here, and here's our chat box. But now one thing we didn't add is that URL. So for example, there's no call to action here. So what we can do, for example, is we can go back into our content here. We can go here, hi, I'm chatbot, how can I help you? But one thing we don't have is that initial part of the conversation. So that is over here, and it is I am Filestack chatbot. I'll link you to a URL of the correct answer. So this is where we can start customizing the chatbot. Here in the prompt, before the messages come from the user, you can create your own prompts just like this. And here it's going to now add in a URL with the correct answer. I'm going to hit save on that. I'm going to go back to this demo, refresh it, and I'm going to type in the same thing. What is file stack? So this is a question from the user. We can see that it's typing as a response. And now we've got the response here from the chatbot, but it has this final call to action with the URL. This is the basics of building a chatbot. I think I was able to do this in, let me have a look. I think that only took about 10 minutes. And if you go further down this rabbit hole, you can build out a lot of features. You can customize it exactly to work however you want. But this is what I found so fascinating that you can now do this sort of thing and not adjust with chatbots, but with all sorts of text models to do all sorts of interactions. And OpenAI make it very easy. And this is what I've been doing for the last year. Now I'll share all of this code as well as this demo. And I'm sure this will be part of the webinar later on. Um, but for the time being, this is what I think you guys all should try out, at least at one point in time. And I think this is what's going to be in part of every business in every website in the future. Thanks, guys.